available for submitting OTMA applications in early October. And before I get started, I want to go over the format of today's presentation. First of all, you can listen to the audio either through your computer with the computer audio option or on the go to, in the GoToMeeting menu, or you can call in to the teleconference. If you choose to call in, I ask that you please mute your phones to prevent feedback during the demonstration. Also, since, since we are anticipating a fairly large number of participants on today's call, I will also ask that you type your questions into the chat box feature in the GoToMeeting, or at least chat, type your name so that I know you have a question, and then I can unmute the phones and, uh, and you can uh, ask your question. We'll hold those questions till the end. I will read them out and answer them to the best of my ability at the end of the demonstration. Uh, that way we don't have issues with numerous people trying to talk at the same time. Also, we are recording the webinar, as I mentioned earlier. We will make it available on the Training and Outreach tab of the HAZMAT Division page of FRA's website for future reference. OK, well, let's go ahead and get started with the demonstration. Uh, again, what you should see on your screens right now is the, the, uh, the beta test form. It says beta testing site in green at the top. Also on this page, you'll note that there is a link to a cover letter. I've got the pointer uh, on the cover letter link right now. If you click left click on that cover letter link, will bring up the cover letter page. Uh, what's most important about this page is it includes the contact information of the hazmat specialists uh, and engineers who are involved in the uh, OTMA process. Also at the top, you'll see a link to the electronic submission instructions. If you're having trouble with uh, uh, filling out the form, although it, it's fairly intuitive. If you're having uh, troubles uh, filling out the form, you can always refer to these electronic submission instructions. And all the instructions for each of the fields are, are provided there. So we'll go back to the electronic OTMA application page. And we'll go ahead and go through an example test application. Uh, in this case, we'll be submitting an OTMA-3. And basically, you'll fill out just like you did with a traditional OTMA uh, form. You will, you will begin filling out your contact information. First of all, the company name. I will type in the company name. Mailing address, and if you filled out an application in the past to save you some time, there is a box there. Uh, the pointer is focused on the box there. If you've submitted an application in the, in the past, click that box. It'll bring down a drop-down menu. You'll see some of our beta testers are already in this list. Uh, but uh, it'll bring down a, uh, a drop-down menu, and you select one of those, and it'll pre-populate uh, the information with the previous address information that was entered. I've also typed my email address for the contact since this is a test, but also if you would like uh, further information about the EOTMA when it becomes available, uh, a web link to the uh, electronic uh, website, um, send me your contact information to, to that email address uh, and I will, I will put you on an email list uh, for further information on this. Okay, now on to the next 
Next uh, section of the form, this is the tank car owner section of the form, where you'll provide uh, information on the tank car owner. What this is used for, uh, when you put in the contact email address for the tank car owner, this will send a copy of the, uh, the final approval to the tank car owner so that they can incorporate that information into their, their quality assurance uh, uh, plan. There's also a check checkbox here if the, uh, the applicant is also the tank car owner, you can click that box and it will uh, duplicate the uh, information I entered above right there. The next section of the form is for information on the uh, packaging that's defective, uh, reporting mark and number. I'll type in uh, Kurtz, K-U-R-T, 0001. You can also check this box if you have more than one tank car with the same problems, uh, with the same routing, you can uh, add those to the form by checking this box. The type of rail car or bulk package, that would be a tank car in this case. Type of uh, DOT specification, DOT 111A100 W1. Is this packaging a special permit packaging? In most cases it would be no, so you leave this box blank, but if it, if it is a special permit packaging, enter the special permit number in that box. Also, is this a full tank car, a residue, or a cleaned and empty uh, tank car? If you select cleaned and empty, you'll be prompted with a box to add the cleaning certificate, since a cleaning certificate is required when you're moving a clean and empty car. So you would just browse through your uh, files on your we'll do the desktop approval webinar it says shipping paper but I would have a, if I had a clean clean car I would select cleaning my cleaning certificate from this menu But in this case, we'll be doing the residue example. So I'll be entering a proper shipping name, petroleum crude oil, no technical name required. Enter the hazard class information, the UN number. Subsidiary hazard class, packing group one. If you had a non-hazardous material, you would click this box. Also, there's a list of uh, proper shipping names from the 49 CFR, the hazmat regulations, if you want a drop-down list to, uh, to review and to copy and paste from. But I imagine in most cases, you would already know the proper shipping name or should already know the proper shipping name of the material. So where did this shipment originate? We'll say
Okay, where is the present location of the car? We're going to say in this case it's the same location that this shipment originated at. So we'll click this box. It'll pre-populate it with that information. And then we have options to enter three destinations here. You're required to enter information for destination one. Then you would enter your routing information, railroad, interchange, and then railroad, or whatever that uh, routing information might be. That's where you would enter it. Also, in the destination two and three, I'm not going to spend time those out right now, but you would enter the same information in for those destinations. So in the case of uh, where you needed to send the car to one location for cleaning and then another location for repair. You would put the cleaning facility in for plan destination one and then the uh, repair facility in for destination two and the miles of each movement. And when you type in additional mileage, it's calculated. The total is automatically calculated down here for you, the total mileage of the, the complete move. If more than 30 days will be required to complete the movement, please explain. In most cases, you won't have to put any information in there. For an OTMA-3, uh, it's good for, uh, for as long as uh, there aren't any changes in the uh, condition of the car. So when you click OTMA-3, you'll see the criteria under HMG 127 show up. So first of all, you'll have to select the OTMA 3 defect category. So the categories are listed here, and this is strictly from HMG 127 guidance document. In this case, we're, we're looking at a bottom outlet valve problem. It's leaking through the, uh, the valve seat. So we'll select bottom fittings. And then we're going to go under defect number eight, the defective bottom outlet valve provided the material is contained by the application of a secondary closure. This does not include flange connection between the valve and tank or any other damage inboard of the primary valve. This, is, this language, again, is taken from HMG 127. Then next, you'll select the applicability. This is a residue package, so we'll select C. And then you'll see the only defective condition that shows up is uh, bottom fitting, bottom outlet valve. So you'll select that and add it over here. Now, if you were to do OTMA1, we'll just show you what happens. You'll have all of the different uh, defective conditions show up here, and you won't have to go through that OTMA3 criteria. So if you're doing an o moving under an OTMA1, this is a traditional process where you would describe the defective condition, submit it, it would go into the queue, and a, a specialist, you'd have to wait for a specialist to review that application. Uh, they may request additional pictures or information, uh, and then you will receive a, a signed approval emailed to you from the specialist, just, just like you do now. Same for OTMA2. OTMA 2s are overloads, so you'll only get two defective conditions in this box. Uh, typically, it's overloaded by weight, so you'd select that, add that to your selected defective condition. But again, this in this example, we're going to do OTMA 3 because there are a couple additional steps involved. Then there's the box that you have on the 
traditional form right now, provide a detailed explanation of the defective condition, DOV leaking through And then there are uh, options for adding additional attach attachments, uh, pictures, PDFs, um, Word files. Uh, this supports a number of different applications here. So you can browse through your files, select your shipping paper, and uh, it will go ahead and upload that document uh, with your application. And you can uh, add additional files if you want to. And uh, you click this button if you have more than two files to add. It will allow you to continue to add files. Then at the bottom, there's an acknowledgment that failure to accurately re represent the defective condition of the tank car, failure to, to disclose additional defective conditions, or failure to comply with the conditions and limitations set forth in the one-time movement approval procedures. HMG 127 is considered non-compliance with 49 CFR section 174.50, and appropriate enforcement action may be taken. And then finally, you'll have a security uh, code that you'll have to enter just to prove that you're a real person rather than a robot. Then you can submit your application. Okay, so we got an error that we did not check the I agree button before submitting the application. You'll see here that box needs to be checked. So if you don't if your form doesn't go through, it's not accepted. Go to the top in red, you'll see why you may have missed a field. So go back and fix that and then click the submit button again. Okay, the application has been submitted, and you will, you will see there a submission ID number. This is important. I would write down this number, 15-00066. Now, that's important because when you come back to update your application, if a specialist asks for additional pictures or additional information, you would go back to the update and application uh, section, enter that number, and it would populate the form with the information that you originally submitted. Also, you can refer to that if you're wondering about the status of an application. It'll make it easier for us to track it down and find out what the current status is. So let's click, click go back and submit and update an application. Now, in this case, that was an OTMA-3. So in your email box, if you typed in your email accurately in the form, you would receive within a few minutes of the submission an approval. And the approval would look like this. This is automatically generated since OTMA-3 is a standing approval. And would include all of the pertinent information including the approval number. Now, this is a change because currently OTMA-3 approvals do not include an approval number. So you would, this would include an approval number and then all of the information, the key fields that you filled out in the application itself, including the OTMA-3 defect category, defect number, uh, criteria, applicability, et cetera. So this is the approval that would be submitted to the carriers, uh, tank car owners, shops, and anybody else who needs a copy of the approval. This is what you would forward to them.
Now there's also another feature. Some of you may be aware that uh, when you submit an application for an OTMA-1, in some cases the specialist will look at the details, decide it, it poses a minimal risk in transportation, and authorize you to move the car as an OTMA-3. We refer to this as uh, specialist discretion. When you receive, when you submit an OTMA-1 application and the specialist authorizes it to move as a 3, you'll receive the same email, although it will have this notation at the top that says authorized by specialist discretion. And again, this will be your approval and you will receive an approval number for that movement. Also, you can come back and update an existing application. So when you come to the top of the form here, instead of submit a new application, you would select update an existing application. This allows you to plug in your submission ID number. In our case, it was 15-00066. And you type that in and load the application, it will load our application. So let's say we had a change in the routing. A different carrier will be uh, performing the second part of the move there. We'll change that. We come down to the bottom, we enter the security code, click update, and it will acknowledge that your application has been updated. Also, for your own record keeping, if you come back to the uh, form itself, update an ex existing application, type in your reference ID number, and load application, you will see at the bottom of this page there's a, a link to save PDF copy. So if you click on this button, it will allow you to open and save this information as a PDF file. And it will look like this. So you can save that locally so that you have a copy of the information that you submitted. So that's, that's the new EOTMA submission process in a nutshell. Um, if you have any questions, now is the time to ask. Uh, you can type your name in the chat box, uh, and I will open the lines uh, so you can ask your question. Anybody have any questions? I've opened the lines here. I don't see anybody. Okay, here's one in the box here. Uh, Roderick Jones, what is the difference from OTMA-1 and OTMA-3? OTMA-3 is a standing approval, so you will receive your, your approval in an email within minutes of your submission of the EOTMA. OTMA-1 requires one of the specialists here at FRA to review it and make a determination on whether additional controls or safety measures are required prior to movement. So you would not receive uh, approval to move the OTMA-1 uh, right away. You would have to wait to hear back from one of the specialists here at FRA. And they go into the queue in the order in which they are received, and we process them in that order. Now, Kathy Yeager has typed in a question here. What type of other supporting documents do you expect to be on a typical OTMA-3? Uh, cleaning certificates, uh, any information on uh, what has been done to ensure the safe movement of the car. In the case of bottom outlet valve failures, uh, you know, just some information that uh, on the location of the leak. 
but it really depends on, on the type of defect. In most cases, that information is covered in the defective conditions uh, that have been selected in, in the form that you'll be prompted to select. Okay, Todd Meek has a question here. What is the rollout date for the electronic OTMA? Our goal is to roll it out in early October. Um, I'll be putting together uh, an email list to send out updates. So if there are any delays, um, I can let you know. All you have to do is send me an email. Uh, that's Kurt, K-U-R-T dot Eichenlaub, E-I-C-H-E-N-L-A-U-B at D-O-T dot gov. Let me know that you want to be placed on the email list for updates on the EOTMA. We anticipate early October at this point. Kim Wolf, what is the general timeline to receive OTMA-1 approval? Uh, we don't have a general timeline for these uh, at this point. Um, it depends on the amount of information that's provided, how long each application takes. In many cases, there's a lot of back and forth communication required. So if people are out of town, it takes a week or two to get back to them on emails. Uh, it, it can vary significantly. If all the information is there uh, in the OTMA-1 application, and appropriate measures have been taken to uh, secure the car for movement and to eliminate any active leak. Uh, the car could potentially move in as, uh, as little as a week or two. But in cases where there's extensive uh, damage to the car and uh, questions about the transport worthiness of the car, uh, it could take quite a bit longer to get all the information uh, that we need to make that determination. Hey, Kurt. Yes. Uh, you mentioned early October to, to start the process. Is there a transition period where you'll allow both the old and the new? Yes. Um, we're, we're going to allow submissions both by the uh, electronic OTMA submission form and through the uh, the process that as it currently exists through the HM Assist email submission uh, for some undetermined amount of time. Uh, we'll see how it goes once we expand from the beta test size to the size of the full universe of uh, uh, OTMA applicants. Uh, if everything goes smoothly, we'll eventually phase out the email option uh, for submission. It will we'll keep it around because you know there's always potential technical difficulties uh, filling out or submitting the form, and we understand that. So it, it should always be an option available to you to submit it by email, but we would prefer that if it's working well and, and, and uh, working properly that you all try to use the, the form first before going to the email submission method. Okay, got it. Thanks. Sure. Kurt, Nathan Hathaway, Honeywell, is there a place where we can actually go in and test right now? There is a, a website that's not uh, publicly available uh, for testing. Uh, we don't, it's on a test server, so if we made it available to too many users at once, uh, uh, we wouldn't have the capacity to handle it. So uh, at this time, uh, we're not conducting any further beta testing uh, before the rollout. So this is being moved to a, a server that can better handle the volume. And uh, until that time, uh, it will not be available. Okay, thank but that you. should be early October. Uh, hopefully the first week in October, we, we will have this out and available to you. And information will be posted on our website under the one-time movement approval tab of the HAZMAT division page of the FRA website. So uh, check back there. And again, if, if you want information on or updates, uh, send me your contact information. Already done. Thank you. All right.
uh, there's a question from Jimmy Ramsey. This form is available at the FRA website, correct? Um, I think we just covered that. It's not available right now, but it will be available uh, early October uh, if all things go as planned. Todd Meek, approximate backlog for a typical OTMA-1 at the present time. Kim, I have Kim in the room with me. Kim, do you know what the approximate backlog is right now? Um, we have 39 waiting, but uh, we have two sectors of systems from two different regions, and so hopefully this week, actually, we'll be able to get through, I'm hoping about 10 more for closing in. Okay. So it's a little over 30 at the present time, it looks like. Okay, a uh, question from David Schoendorfer. David? Yeah, I think you got it already. I hit the hit the button there too early, but it's actually been answered already. And uh, it looks great, Kurt. Okay, great. Okay, I have a question here from Kathy Yeager. What happens to existing pending OTMA-1s when the new EOTMA rolls out? Do we have to resubmit? No, you will not have to resubmit the OTMA-1s. Those uh, that have been submitted would be worked in, in the order that they're received before we would begin working on uh, OTMA-1 submitted via the new EOTMA system. Okay, once you roll out the EOTMA, assume this would be the only way to apply for an OTMA. Uh, we covered that. Uh, we'll have the email option available, but we would prefer that you use the form uh, as long as it's working. Jennifer Johnson, you stated the car could move in a week or two. Is that misleading at this point? Because even without emails back and forth, I have been waiting for months. Are you hoping to expedite the process with the EOTMA? Yes, Jennifer. Our, our goal is to uh, eliminate the backlog and expedite the process and streamline the entire process. Uh, now, this, this EOTMA submission form doesn't seem like a whole lot, but it definitely uh, removes a lot of the administrative burden that we were running into with these applications. Uh, so it should help streamline and make the process more efficient. Hey, Kurt? Yes. This is Kevin, just to help Jennifer. We are really focusing on right now on focusing on concentrating on getting this the backlog completed. That's what we're focusing on right now, trying to get that backlog down so that Whereas uh, we don't have as many back in the backlog when the EOTMA system does roll out, as much as we can. Okay, I think I've covered all the questions I see there in the chat box. Does anybody else else on the line have a question to ask? Kurt, can you hear me? Yes, can. Paul Garcia from Chevron Salt Lake City. Could you repeat your email address, please? Sure thing. It's K U R T dot E I C H E N L A U B. And I will, if you have it, your screen up, I will put my email address back up there. You'll see it there. I've highlighted it there. Can you see it? I, I wasn't logged on on the screen, I got... Oh, okay. So E-I-C-H-E-N-L-A-U-B? At D-O-T dot gov, right. All right, thank you. Sure. Yeah, Kurt, just to let you know, there, there may be a number of people who are just on audio only, because uh, I know when I tried to log in to go to meeting, I got a message that said it, it was full and wasn't accepting any, anybody new, so... Yeah, I apologize for those who uh, were not able to see the uh, webinar. Apparently, we, we thought we had a, a cap at 100 people, but uh, uh, the cap, the number of people was capped at 26. 
when we started this webinar. This is the first time we've done something like this. So I apologize for that. Uh, for those who weren't able to see the form and, uh, and what was going on during the, the presentation, I encourage you to um, either look at the, we're recording this, this webinar and we'll make it available on our website uh, in the coming days to uh, review at your convenience. We will also uh, uh, make this, uh, we will also be conducting another webinar which is posted on our HAZMAT page on next Tuesday, a week from today. So uh, that's another option if you'd like to, to go through it live. <laughs> On mobile. Can you uh, refresh us or tell us the name of the website again? Yes, I'll, I'll bring it up here on the, the website. It's, uh, if you go to fra.gov and then you click on Railroad Safety and click on Divisions and click on uh, Hazardous Materials. HAZMAT Training and Outreach is the page where this, uh, this is located. And then you click on One Time Movement Approval Webinar. And that will bring up the information on the webinars for today and next Tuesday. When the, uh, when the form goes public, I believe it will be available at the Hazardous Materials Division page under movement approval subcategory. Yes, on the uh, meeting next Tuesday, will the cap be larger? Yes, uh, we will. Oh, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I will make sure that the cap is expanded <coughs> next <coughs> next Tuesday. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you. Folks. Uh, Make it a little easier. Um, I pulled up uh, an email Kirk sent out to uh, internally a while, uh, a little earlier this month. If you're ready to copy, I can give you the direct link to the uh, to the FRA pay website page. If you're ready, to, if you want to copy it, https colon double backslash www .fra dot dot gov single backslash the word page with a capital P P A G E single backslash capital P zero six six two. Now so if you have that as a link you can just click right on that, it takes you right to the webinar uh, page. Kurt, can you send that in a link to those who send you a um, email today? You said you will send us more information if we send you an email. Absolutely. Um, maybe you could hit hit reply or something and send Kevin's link to. That's just a, it just gets you to the same place Kurt walked you through. It's just a direct link. Okay. So, Going through all those steps. That's all. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, it looks like that are, that's all the questions we've had today. Thank you again for your patience. I'm sorry about the, uh, the limit, and uh, hopefully uh, things will go smoother next week. We'll have a lot more lines so everyone can see the presentation. Uh, again, we'll post it online, so if, if you weren't able to review it at your convenience. Thank you, Kurt. That concludes our demonstration. Thank you again for your participation. Have a great day. Thank you.